Hello everybody, welcome to our YouTube channel Knowledge Terminal and in this video today we are going to discuss about preparal sepsis. So generally puparium is actually defined as the period following the childbirth during which the body tissues especially pelvic organs revert back approximately to the pre-pregnant state both anatomically and physiologically. Now what this definition means is actually puparium is a period which occur after the childbirth and during this period the tissues such as pelvic organs, uterus, they revert back, revert back in the sense they return back to their normal pre-pregnant state that is how they were before the pregnancy both anatomically and physiological that is structurally and functionally. As we all know when a woman conceives there are a lot of structural and functional changes in an in the body of a woman so generally maximum changes we see in uterus so this uterus and other pelvic organs they return back to their normal pre-pregnant state during this period and we call it as puparium and generally sepsis is actually a term which is used to indicate the presence of infection in the body or it shows the reaction or mechanism of our body towards an infection. So combinedly puparal sepsis is infection of the genital tract that occurs as a complication of delivery or miscarriage. If there is delivery or miscarriage due to which as a complication if any infection is developed we call that infection as puparal sepsis. So moving on to the conditions that favor the puparal sepsis so generally in the late pregnancy or before the onset of labor certain organisms are present on the vagina we call it as vaginal flora which are completely harmless the organisms are doderlins bacillus candida albicans escherichia coli streptococcus staphylococcus aureus and so on but if by any means this vaginal flora they gain the access to bloodstream they turn pathogenic and they may cause infection to the host so generally the main conditions by which this vaginal flora gain access to the bloodstream are if there is any damage to the cervical vaginal mucous membrane or if there is any open wound created by the cleavage of decidua or if there are any blood clots present in the placental site. If under these three conditions the vaginal flora they gain access to the bloodstream and they may cause infections. So the predisposing factors for puparal sepsis are divided into antenatal factors and intranatal factors. In antenatal factors malnutrition and anemia, preeclampsia, premature rupture of membrane sexual intercourse in the late pregnancy and preterm labor. If the mother's nutrition status is not well developed and uh, the hemoglobin is reduced then her immunity system might not be well so in that cases the women is very very prone towards infection and in preeclampsia and premature rupture of membrane there may be a chance for the women to develop infections and if there is any sexual intercourse that is occurring in the pregnancy period even that may lead to infection then also in preterm labor in intranatal factors if the labor is prolonged if it is more than 18 hours there may be a risk for developing infections and if there is any traumatic operative delivery done during the labor it may cause to occurrence of the infection and if it is there is postpartum hemorrhage that is continuous bleeding due to that bleeding and if the patient is not following proper uh, perineal hygiene or the practitioner is not following proper aseptic techniques then that may lead to the cause of infection uh, and also in placenta previa uh, and in repeated vaginal examination see when vaginal examinations are done complete aseptic techniques should be followed by the practitioner who is performing the vaginal examination because if in case the practitioner is not following the uh, aseptic techniques that may lead to infections to the women 
then if there is cesarean section we all know in cesarean section a wound or an incision is created on the lower abdominal area if the wound is not properly cared then in that case the women may have risk to develop infection in the wound then if there are any retained bits of placenta or there are any blood clots at the placental site the microorganisms may develop at that area they may gain access towards that area and they may develop infections in the host so these were the predisposing factors that favor or that cause puerperal sepsis so now talking about the mode of infection there are totally three modes that is endogenous autogenous and exogenous so endogenous is actually the organism is already in the genital tract before the delivery and autogenous uh, in autogenous the organism instead of the genital tract it is present somewhere else in the body such as skin but at the time of the delivery they gain access to the blood stream and they migrate to the genital organs and cause infection and exogenous is if the infection is caused from the outside sources such as if the visitors are visiting the patient and they are not properly following uh, aseptic techniques they may have chance for uh, spreading the infection that is cross infection from visitors to patient then clinical features the clinical features of puerperal sepsis are divided into local infection clinical features uterine infection clinical features which are again divided into mild uterine infection and severe uterine infection generally in local infection we see the patient may experience a slight fever generalized head malice and headache and the local infected part will be red in color and it is swollen and there may be pus discharge from the wound may be seen and patient may experience chills and rigors when we talk about mild uterine infection same there is pyrexia that is increased body temperature or we call it as fever then there is increased heart rate that is tachycardia and there is local discharge which is red copious and offensive and the uterus is soft and tender then in severe uterine infection there is fever along with chills then there is tachycardia abdominal pain is experienced by the patient there is dysuria reduced concentration or decreased urination uh, they and there is also local discharge in this uh, condition but here there is green color and scanty and odorless local discharge is seen and the uterus is tender then moving on to diagnostic evaluations uh, history collection is done and physical examinations are done then complete blood picture or complete blood uh, studies are done then pelvic ultrasonography blood cultures urine analysis vaginal and sur cervical swabs tests are done to detect infection then ct and mri to see whether there are any retained bits of placenta or any blood clots present inside the uterus then prevention of puerperal sepsis in antenatal period how can we prevent the puerperal sepsis is by improving the nutritional status of the patient if the nutritional status of the patient is improved then the immunity of the patient will be developed and patient will not have or will have less chances for infection then if the patient is performing personal hygiene there will be very very less chances to develop infection then the patient should be having abstinence from sexual intercourse during pregnancy and also the patient should avoid unnecessary vaginal examinations because even it may cause infection then in intranatal period completely surgical sepsis should be followed during the delivery and screening for group b streptococcus in high risk patients should be done because even it may cause infection then prophylactically antibiotic therapy should be started then in postnatal we have to restrict too many visitors because from visitors there may be a chance for cross infection and we have to uh, provide the sanitary pads which are sterilized to the patient and we have to educate the patient to change the pads for every 5 to 6 hours then 
infected babies or infected mothers if among the babies and mothers if anyone is infected we have to separate the mother and baby or we have to isolate the mother and baby then complications that are developed due to puerperal sepsis are pelvic peritonitis endometritis pelvic abscess bacteremia and septicemia then management how do we manage gen management is divided into medical management and surgical management in medical management as it is infection in infection obviously we provide antibiotics to the patient so antibiotics which are given to the patient are gentamicin 1.5 mg metronidazole 500 mg clindamycin 2 grams ampicillin 2 grams and piptas which is a combination of two drugs that is piperacillin and tazobactam then in surgical management if any wound is there we have to properly suture the wound we have to take care of the wound and we have to pro properly uh, change the dressing of the wound in, in order to prevent the infection and if there are any uh, bits of placenta or blood clots present inside the uterus in that case we have to do surgical evacuation to remove all the contents which are present inside the uterus which may cause infection then we have to perform colpotomy then we have to do laparotomy and in rare cases we can do hysterectomy then in nursing diagnosis as there is fever we can formulate a nursing diagnosis that is impaired body temperature or hyperthermia related to puerperal sepsis then acute pain as we have seen in severe uterine infection patient may experience abdominal pain so we can formulate acute pain related to uterine infection or if there is any local wound present in that case also if the wound is inflamed due to infection then in that case also patient may experience pain so this it can be experienced due to uterine infection or inflammation of the infected part of the wound then there is impaired bladder process that is dysuria which is related to infection then obviously there will be anxiety towards the health status and knowledge deficit related to treatment modalities so this was all about puerperal sepsis i hope you understood the concept please do like share the video with your friends and subscribe for getting information and updates regarding more such interesting videos in future thank you